Good morning. Thank you, William. Um, so my name is Frederick Fowler-Murray with the Computing Department as uh, William. And I have the pleasure of introducing our special guests for the morning. Uh, so first, uh, I will ask Patrick Lothray, who is the Warden, or the Colonel President of Goldsmith, University of London, to come uh, and give us a presentation of Goldsmith in the context of the symposium. Just a few words about the background of Patrick. He's been with us at Goldsmith since 2010. Uh, previously, he was the director of BBC Nations and Regions uh, for about a decade. Uh, so well exposed to the realities of the world. He has background uh, in journalism and media. He's been with the European Television and Media Academy on their board. Uh, he's had uh, activities with Hong Kong Advanced Institute of Cross-Disciplinary Studies. He's, uh, he, has a, he holds an honorary doctorate from Leeds Metropolitan University. He is a fellow of the Radio Academy and member of BAFTA. Patrick, please. Welcome, Patrick. Thank you. Thank you, Frederick. In the context of this morning, as Frederick mentioned my career, Almost every, I said to the ambassador earlier, almost every skill I learned, every training I had over my 30 years in the BBC is now entirely obsolete. The revolution is so rapid, the change so great, and that's why I'm very pleased to be present at the conference this morning, because you are, we are envisaging a new and different world and trying to take a grip of it on behalf of our great learning institutions, but also on behalf, critically, of our students. It is an enormous welcome for me, as a great opportunity and a great pleasure for me as warden to welcome such distinguished guests in our midst today, especially His Excellency the Japanese Ambassador Suruoka. Ambassador Suruoka, you are very, very welcome here. And it's a great pleasure, equally, to welcome the president of the great University of Kyoto, Professor Yamagawa, here to join us as well. Thank you so much for being here to begin this partnership with endorsement at such a very high level augurs very well for the future. I've been asked to tell you a little bit about Goldsmiths to set the context, and as a history man, uh, that's a dangerous invitation because I'll probably go on rather too much. But you are joining us in the most modern building on this campus, which has been a center of learning for some 125 years. We're in the Professor Stuart Hall building. That this, it's named after a pioneering academic who helped shape the disciplines and the form of critical thought which is found across our entire campus. Pioneering is a word you often hear here at Goldsmiths. From our very beginnings, this institution has always championed the new. We began life in 1891 thanks to the philanthropic instincts of the Goldsmiths Company, the worshipful company of Goldsmiths, which had been around <coughs> for about 1200 years, accumulating great resources in the city of London. And uh, this was a time of true ambition, transformative ambition in the world of education, not just here, but across the globe. The University of Kyoto was founded, I believe, in 1897 as part of that exciting time. We are siblings. We are simultaneous in our belonging to that era of great hope and great ambition. For Goldsmiths, there was a very clear ambition and a mission to bring education to the industrial working classes, um, sharing our gift of knowledge to help empower the people of London. Thirteen years later, the Goldsmiths gifted this institution, this site, to the University of London on the condition that we would always stay true to the mission of education. And in 1905, this Goldsmiths College was formally opened. That is when we became part, formally part of the University of London. We are now one of 18 institutions that constitute that the third oldest university in the United Kingdom. Uh, that makes up about 120,000 students studying over 3,700 programs. 
From our early days, Goldsmiths was known for creating new ways of thinking and new ways of doing. Our reputation and achievements grew throughout the 20th century, with art gradually becoming a defining program for the college, as William and Frederick have said. We became the home of forward thinkers, both in our teaching staff and among our students. Through the years, our alumni read like a who's who of cultural innovators. In the 1960s and 70s, we were home to Mary Quant, John Cale, Malcolm McLaren, and his partner in all kinds of enterprises, Vivian Westwood. The 1980s brought the young British artists, the Brit art scene, Damien Hirst, Sarah Lucas, Anthony Gormley, brought a great deal of attention and significance to our endeavour here at Goldsmiths. And then more recently, remarkable individuals like Steve McQueen, the Oscar winner, who said that his time at Goldsmiths was a, a time of experimentation and self-discovery. We are a creative hothouse. Our scholars provide the space and the time for experimentation. We are also ensure that they have the guidance and support to go, students have the guidance and support to go on and achieve their career goals and ambitions. I'm pleased to say that as we welcome students back to this campus later this week to re-engage with their studies, we know that we will be welcoming back another generation of innovators and of thinkers. So many of them are engaged in the issues that are the focus of today's symposium. How art and technology somehow, even magically, combine and entwine with one another. These are truly new and exciting frontiers that you are determined to explore today. Just last week, we had the final show for our students on the MA Computational Arts Program. Among other projects featured was a dance duet between a human and a robot, with the student exploring the very basic concept of performance. It was truly fascinating. Dancing with angels or dancing with the devil? At the very core of that exploration was a new frontier of understanding. We are also, of course, engaging with everyday issues. As high tech, as, as uh, William said earlier, becomes more and more prevalent in our lives, with artificial intelligence set to run our households very shortly, and maybe before too many years, to challenge much of the modern employment model. It is vital that the work undertaken here in creative computing and the arts is at the very heart of all of this. Thankfully, there appears to be recognition by the United Kingdom government of that significance. The UK's new research body is determined to be an inclusive and welcoming space in which all disciplines can fill at home and are valued for their contribution. Sir Mark Walport, the head of UK research, has stressed how important it is to have the arts hand in hand with more traditional industrial programs. There is a realization that the arts and creativity can be the key which unlocks so many doors and provides breakthroughs that engineering and technology alone would not achieve. We need in crude basics both sides of the brain to function in harmony. This is recognised again in our government's industrial strategy and at Goldsmiths we are determined to put ourselves centre stage in what is being described as a new industrial revolution. Powered once again by STEAM, science, technology, art and mathematics. Our students will, we are confident, be part of that revolution, guided and encouraged by the brilliant staff we have here and of whom we are so proud. We are very privileged in Goldsmiths to have people like William and Frederick guiding our destiny in this uncertain future. Of course, the wonderful thing about creative endeavour is that it knows no boundaries. Inspiration has no boundaries, which is why it is wonderful to welcome our friends from Kyoto here today. As you will know, the UK is currently going through a spasm of anxiety, otherwise known as Brexit, departure from the European Union. 
following the referendum vote of a year ago. It's a time of great uncertainty, both in our sector and across society, with very much still to be decided about the shape of the UK once we have formally exited from the European Union. But of one thing we are absolutely certain, we need friends and we need collaborators to ensure that the UK is very much part of the wider world of research, of, of science and of exploration. It, this time of uncertainty, most great creativity historically happens at times of huge social uncertainty. We are certainly in one. We have been a beacon institution here at Goldsmiths with a rich heritage of building bridges and of forming partnerships that span the globe. This morning marks just such an occasion. Now more than ever, we must reach out to our friends wherever they are in the world. I know that this is a passion shared by Dr. Yamagawa, whose own work in the world of ape behavior is so important in divining our future. And it's very, very encouraging for us and very heartening for us that you are with us this morning. We have identical principles. Our institutions are founded on them. I know that Kyoto University has three core missions, education, research, and social contribution. Our institutions really are perfectly aligned. We are building on brilliant foundations as we gather here today to formally recognize our partnership. With two institutions so well aligned, this memorandum of understanding that is about to be signed gives us a framework to grow and to work closely together in the months and years ahead. It allows our faculty to exchange, to learn from each other, and to think of schemes and dreams and research bids that would not otherwise happen. And I trust that it will, the relationship will be at its strongest when we exchange students, because they are truly the pioneers of a different future, one that I and most of us in this room would not otherwise envisage. It's a powerful way of discovering new cultures, new ways of thinking, and new ways of doing. This is an exciting moment. I said earlier that we use the word pioneering and words like excitement very often at Goldsmiths, but I truly believe this is another example of that spirit of entrepreneurship and I so know, and I've known it when had the pleasure of a visit a couple of years ago, that there are real opportunities for us uh, to take and build something truly pioneering from this morning's occasion and the conference that I'm very proud to be part of today. I look forward to seeing wonderful work developing, and I look forward to new friendships and new collaborations and new research bits in the future. Thank you. And please join me as I hand over now uh, in welcoming Prof Professor Juichi Yamagawa, President of Kyoto University.